Alrighty, hello everyone, and welcome to a, uh, a special kind of video that I've been meaning to do for a while now. I wanted to show everybody how I do my editing in Premiere Pro, and kind of give you like a, a brief insight of like if there's maybe something that I'm doing that maybe you haven't done in a certain way, it might help you do uh, editing. This is the second take I'm doing at it because I lost all the fucking audio from my mic and I had to go take a cool off session. So... We're doing it again. I didn't really lose the audio, but it's so fucking quiet that it sounds terrible. There's echo everywhere. I don't know what happened. I think my XLR cable freaked. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Untitled. I'm now, I'm not going to export this audio because I already did it once. And, uh, or the, or the video, rather. I'm not going to export the video. So, let's click on all panels and watch the resource hug take forever to change over to panels for some reason because it's stupid not premiere doesn't do it well I don't know why and uh, that's gonna sound great fantastic so this is what it's gonna look like when you start up premiere first of all and I'm just gonna assume you have some sort of kind of understanding that you have of video editing in general this looks confusing as shit I didn't like this so I went to editing because I thought that'd be the tab that I work with and I changed it around to make it look how like how I like it and the way you can do that is you can uh, right click on tabs and close the panel or undock the panel you can double click and make it a full panel you could hit the tilde key and make it a full panel and if you hold hit the tilde key it's going to make whichever one your your cursor is on over here the full panel so you can see like audio clip mixer and uh let's get right into it so we're going to import some media first and the way you can do that is either go to file and import control i or just double click this little box right here which is what i do and the first thing that we have to do is go to my green screen folder on my external hard drive. And we're going to be doing episode 29 instead of 28, which is the one that I had just done in the last recording session. So episode 29, boom. And I guess I can actually export this. It'll just be another reason for me to do another uh, video editing, get me a little ahead of the game for once. <clears throat> okay, and then we're going to be going to the up here, quick access. I have this pinned Retro Millennia. This is where all of our other shit is. So we go to Retro Essentials, and we go to the Facebook banner. If you've noticed behind our gameplay footage, we have that blue little picture right behind it. And then we're going to get the 60 frame per second intro because that's the one that has Ken in it now, and the 60 frame outro. And I'll explain why I use those now instead of the other ones in a second, other than having Ken in it. Then we need the raw audio from... The game footage so we're gonna go to the resident evil folder and pull out episode 29 yeah and we're going to pull out the actual green the game footage yeah and we go down to episode 29 and you know this is the video footage because it's a vlc file and it's got the little cone that means it's a video file boom obviously these say live commentary so boom now that that's in now i haven't put anything into my timeline or aka your sequence here but the reason that I have made 60 frame per second intros is because if you import something with a lower frame rate, but put something with a higher frame rate in the timeline first, you can always export at a higher frame rate. So if I put this 60 frame intro in right now, and then say I brought in some webcam footage, for example, that was like 30 frames per second, and I, I could still export it at 30 at 60 frames per second, because now if you go to your sequence settings up here, it thinks it's at 60 frames per second, and it's not going to try and up-convert anything. But if you were to bring in the 30 frame per second footage first, and then put 60 frames in next, and then export it at 60, it's not going to know what to do because it's trying to match everything to the 30 frame per second time frame. So you always want to, if you want to export at a higher frame rate, even though you have lower frame rates, be sure to always bring in your higher frame rate stuff to your timeline first. Uh, it took me a very long time in Premiere to figure out how to actually do that properly. I'm getting paranoid. I got to check just to make sure we're okay. I had to make sure the audio is still actually going. So you can see that we have the intro in. Ta -da. Okay, great. We know it runs. Fantastic. We're running at 60 frames a second. Next thing that we're going to do in our timeline, you can see you have your video track here and your audio track here. And if you ever want to turn off your video tracks, click the little I button. And if you ever want to mute the audio, just click the little M. Boom. Now there's no audio, but it's still playing. Uh, bring in the Resident Evil track. Boom. Now we have some gameplay footage. All right, I'm going to zoom out here really quick. Wow, it's really quiet audio. I don't know why. Was this, where is this, where he, yeah, oh, this, yeah, okay. Episode 29, Melissa's going to love that episode. So, um, the first thing that we are going to do, I suppose, is, uh, obviously, we, we don't have the green screen over top of us right here. Now, I'll show you the tilde key feature. Click that, see how it just full screen the, 
the gameplay or the audio mixer or the the da, 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 examples. And so we don't know what to do with this yet. We don't know where the episode begins. You just kind of see me start running with Leon. There's no a voiceover. There's no green screen. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this little footage right here, the gameplay footage, and move it up. And now if you can see they're both highlighted in white, that's because they're linked together because they were recorded and they're considered one file format. And you know that because if you go up here with the little cursor right here and you see it's got the little demo reel and the little audio wave symbol, that means that they this file contains both video and audio. I feel like I'm doing a much better job explaining this this time because last time I was kind of jittery. And if you ever want to unlink these, all you got to do is right click on the one you want to unlink and click that and boom, now they're both independent. But we don't want to do that. We want them connected. So, now if you know anything about our gameplay footage, you know that uh, we have the blue banner behind all of our stuff to kind of just make it feel like it's part of a Retro Millennia video. So, bring this stuff in right over here. But now you see how it's underneath it? That's, it works the same way, but you can't see the blue footage and the, re or the blue banner, and that's because there is a black bar outline around this game, and that's because we're playing it on the Wii U, and it's still putting it out at a 1080p format, but the game was only ever made in 480i, so it's actually being stretched resolution. So the first thing we have to do is add an effect called a cropping. And if you go to your effects panel up there and you type in crop, you can come down here and drag and drop it directly on the footage that you want it to affect. You want it to affect the gameplay footage, and you go to effect controls. Make sure you clicked on the uh, video track that you want to specifically edit, and you can see right here it says crop. This is your effect you're gonna be affecting with, and you can do the left, top, right, bottom, and if you drag and drop, you see how it's cutting out, just like if you were editing a photo, you're cropping all this shit out, blah, 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 we're just gonna, and if that's, uh, now it's cut out. Obviously you don't wanna do that, but you can see the blue background. So, one other thing to explain with cropping is if you click zoom, it's going to restretch and fit it to your actual output source. And you don't want to do that uh, because it will mess up the aspect ratio. And this is, I still want it at a 16 by 9 from the Wii U. So I actually have a preset made for this. I'm going to clear that out. Go to presets. And it's Resident Evil Wii U. That's what I just named it to make it nice and easy. Drag, drop. Boom. Black is gone. But I don't like that there's all this extra space from the blue. So I made another one that is a 1080p format. It's just, I didn't know what else to name it. It's just a resizing, and I'll show you that in effect control. So let's, uh, let's, get, let's get rid of that. And if you go to, if you click on your box right here, and you go to motion, you can see FX motion. This is going to affect the position of where it is and also the scale. And that's what the 1080p, it's just a, a rescaling. So we'll just undo all of those. Go to our presets, drag and drop the 1080p, and bam. Just a little bit of a, of a grow. So control Z, control Y. Oh, it's not control Y on this one. That's, that's GIMP. Boom. There we go. So now that is, that is done. That is where it needs to be, but we're just going to have to drag this all the way out. And um, a good shortcut to know on the timeline down here is when you're moving back and forth, um, if... I'm, I was used to Vegas for the longest time where if you use the scrolly wheel on your mouse, it's going to zoom in your uh, timeline. But on, on Premiere Pro, what it does is it goes left and right. So you have to, you can either hit the plus and minus button, and the plus and minus button will zoom in specifically where your eye tool is. That's this little guy that I'm dragging around. Hit the plus button. See how it's specifically zooming in right where the eye tool is. It's put it to the center, and it's going to zoom in that exact spot. Now, if I way to prove this a little easier is if I put it right here you'll still be able to see this part if I zoom in like this. See how it's still it's still zooming in specifically at this point. Now, if you want to zoom in on a specific point, like say I want to look at this without moving the eye tool, hold the Alt button and then keep your cursor there and then just zoom in with the scrolly wheel. And boom, now you can actually zoom in there. But the problem is, is that when you let go of Alt, it's going to move where your, your cursor is even though you have your mouse here, it's gonna move the keyboard cursor up to the file right here. So if I hit if I hit Alt and uh, hit the space bar to go try and play it from there, it's gonna do this and bring your start menu up for some stupid reason. I think I have to remap the shortcut. So you just gotta, if you hit Alt, just click back on your timeline and you'll be good to go and it'll start playing again. Okay, so now that we have the recropping and uh, all this stuff good, the next thing to do 
is bring in the uh, green screen. Now, this isn't the exact order that I do everything. I actually just bring it all into one and then just fine tune everything. I'm just trying to be very uh, concise with everybody here so you can kind of understand it a little easier. So let's uh, bring this guy in right there to the beginning, even though that's not going to line up properly. Now you can see like, oh, shit, that's on top of the gameplay footage. What are you going to do? You can't see anything. Well, obviously, we're not going to know where to line that up. So we're going to try and bring in the audio from Audacity and look for a spike on the audio. Like there, that's a very small, uh, short spike. That's the clap. If you listen, that's how we sync our video audio footage. And it's just, uh, listen right here. I Boom. Know. And you can see I just clapped right here. So if we use your left and right keys on your uh, keyboard... To go frame by frame, you can go literally one, two, three, four, five like that, or just kind of hold it and let it, boom, that's where the clap hits. Then we're going to drag that audio that we just brought in right before it, right before the clap, and drop it right on. And then you can just fine tune it by zooming in. You can see when you move it, look below my cursor, you can see the time code moving. That's how many little guys it's going to click by, and that's going to be one more. Boom. And it's a little before it, that's okay. It's gonna be so fast that you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, and I'll show you that right here. And everything is still lined up, and sounds great. Cool, so now that we have those two lined up, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, first of all, when, you, when we bring in our footage from OBS, it always creates an extra audio check, so we're going to unlink that, delete it. Now, the green screen footage, because we have green screen labeled here, game footage we know is Resident Evil 4 and then we know that RE29 EP29 dot wave is the game is the voiceover because it's dot wave is an audio file click shift and hold for some reason Premiere does uh hold the shift button on Windows instead of uh you know how like if you click multiple things you got to hold control to multiple select things for some reason Premiere is hold shift then right click on that and link those bastards up boom now they are good to go they're going to move the same they're going to do all the same stuff cool and that's all good to go. Now, you're thinking, well, what the hell? It's still too big. I can't I can't see the gameplay footage. Well, that's where the next thing comes in is you can see I have a face cam preset and a green screen preset. And I'll show you what they do. And then we'll go back and explain the full way to do it. So, boom. It, uh, oh, shit. Click off. Sorry. Face cam onto there. There we go. Now, it's moved our little face cam down here. And you can see that we are fully out of the way of the gameplay footage, but that green shit's still there, so we gotta go green screen retro. Well, blam, and it's gone. Now you can see we're no longer in the way of the gameplay footage. And uh, obviously what we're doing here is not even remotely lined up with the gameplay footage. So we're now going to have to uh, try and find where I find an on-screen command, a visual sync of what I do or say with myself with the game. But first, before we do that, let's bring this back. So the first thing we did with the uh, the green screen is we, we rescaled it. And again, that's just a, um, a motion thing. If you go into the green screen right here, it's just like moving it over and moving it down and shrinking it and stuff. And that's really easy. Control Z to undo if anybody doesn't know that. I'm sure everybody knows that at this point. It's 2016 if you don't know that. Why? And then we are going to... Uh, where is it? Do the green screen effect. Let's do make sure that that's not on there. Minimize that so we can make sure that that's out of the way. So the the green screening effect is an effect under video effects under keying. It's called ultra key. Um, I always just type it in whenever uh, before I had to make the preset ultra key. Boom! It's the only one with the word ultra in it. So you drag and drop it over here, but it hasn't done anything yet, and that's because you have to set it up. So when you uh, when you go to effect controls. You can try and dial in the green color if you want, but like if I just like kind of say like, oh, well that that, that kind of looks close, but I can't fully tell. And you hit OK. It's not, you see like there's this like grainy film over top of it. It's not perfect. So what you're going to do, instead of trying to dial in the code, just click the little dropper tool and bam. Now it has matched that exact color and you're perfectly good. And let's, uh, let's click on motion really fast so I can show you guys this. So if you look, you can see... Uh, if I zoom this in a lot, you can see like there's this black outline around Rob. And that's because the green screening that we do isn't perfect, but it's m more than good enough for YouTube for what we do. And the way you clean that up is going through matte cleanup. All you got to do is 
Ooh, mama. Uh, mess with the uh, choke and the soften. And uh, it will, you can uh, basically cut out that black line. And it's, it's really easy to do. You just got to do some messing around and some tampering with it. Nothing too crazy. Let's get rid of this uh, ultra key now and put the proper one on. I won't touch the choke or anything like that because for some reason the drivers from Premiere do not like the drivers from my MSI graphics card. Uh, this crash, this little video box crashes every time I mess with that. Um, it didn't before, so I was lucky, lucky enough to get a preset made before the drivers started crashing that. And I, I, they haven't, Premiere hasn't set an update or anything for it, so kind of sucks, but you get, you gotta get over it, I guess. Green screen retro, bam, face cam, bam. Okay, cool. So we got the clap going right there. Okay, so, and now the next thing we're gonna listen for is me saying uh, a visual command on screen, like up, down, or left, right, and you could hear that when I was scrubbing it, I said up, down, so. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And it was almost lined up with the on-screen command, but not perfect. So I use the arrow keys to fine-tune what I'm doing on screen until I find that first frame that it moves like that. So right there, left, right, left, right, boom. You can see that it moves this cur this little cursor right here. If I go left one, it's gonna go down right one. And then all I'm gonna do is drag the audio right here, right before it onto the cursor and zoom it in. And now one thing that I always do is I always bring the audio to kind of fade into it. Like you don't want to capture the ul because it's going to be a little bit behind this. You want to always kind of get the eft of it. So like left, right, left, right, or in this case, up, down, up, down. So let's watch and see if it's uh, timed up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And we're good. And so now all we have to do is uh, I'll probably leave this stuff in as kind of a joke because I like to do that sometimes and like we'll we'll cut it out. We'll see how this how this sounds really quick. Danny does not fuck with these bitch ass hoes. Oh, so here's a good here's a good thing to explain first before I actually uh you can hear that like the game audio is too loud for us. You can't hear us very well, you can hear the game audio. Danny does not fuck with these bitch ass hoes. Waste of magnum ammo. Terrible. So um the first thing that we want to do is we're gonna want to bring this game audio down. It's too loud and so you click on the game audio, make sure your uh, eye tool is over top of it, go to the audio mixer, and you know we're on audio track one, and right now if you look at this audio track, we'll tilt it for you, you can see the FX button right here is white, and there's no line here, that means that this audio track is completely raw, there's no added effects. If I go to the effect mixer right now on audio one, two, three, corresponds to audio one, two, and three, and bring the volume right here down to negative 15 dB or decibels. That's what the unit of measure is for volume. You can see right here, it is now yellow and there's this little bar right here and this is affecting how much volume you've changed. And uh, now when you hear it, when they come up to him, looks at the teeth and goes, you can hear that Rob is a little more clear now, but you still can't hear us uh, as, as clearly as you'd like. You can hear the uh, the game audio has dropped significantly though. Danny does not fuck with these that gunshot is nowhere near as uh, battling with our voiceover as much, but we still need to bring our voiceover much higher. So, first thing that I do is there's an effect called dynamics. Ooh, if I can spell right, right there. And all you're gonna do is drag and drop that onto your voiceover. And if you go, you click on it, and you go to effect controls, you can see that dynamics is now on the audio effects tab down here. And if you click edit, everything that you need to work with is already here for you. And they have a preset made for you, but it doesn't really bring it up the way I need to. There's almost no change at all. It's a soft compression, very minimal makeup gain. There's almost no volume increase at all. So I have made a preset for this one and I will show you how much of a drastic change it gives for us. We'll do a side by side comparison. It's called retro voiceover. Boom. And uh, you can already hear from the scrubbing that it's much louder. So we're going to mute that. Danny does not fuck with these bitch ass hoes. Bring it back. Turn it on. Danny does not fuck with these bitch ass hoes. And boom, it is way louder now. Now it doesn't, now it sticks clearly over top of the game audio right here and uh, the voiceover work Danny does not significantly fuck with better. These bitch. And if you guys want me to make another video explaining how to mix audio like that, I can, I'll gladly do that for you. That's, um, I just don't want to take the time to explain how to dial in a compressor right now. It's not what the point of this video is. So, let's find out where we want to start with all this nonsense. We'll start back here. Yeah. 
Rob's getting a little excited for no reason. Dad appropriate for a bitch dad? <laughs> bitch dad. Look at my dad. Oh god. The Wiimote! He saved the game data and here we go. Danny does not fuck with these bitch ass hoes. Bars. When they come up to him, looks at the teeth and goes, What are those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jackie. All right, and that's where that's where we can stop it. And we'll just uh, then we'll hit the C button. That is your cutter tool, and we'll cut, cut, and cut, and boom. Hit the V button. That brings you back to your little grabber guy here. If you want to move more than one track without having to link them up, all you got to do is click and hold and drag, and boom, it selects all of those. Oh, it didn't cut my banner. Why you not cut that? Oh, there we go. Okay, and we can grab those, and we'll, let's see, where do we want to start this? Right there, we'll start where I say bitch dad. Right there. Boom. And now we're going to bring it so this comes in. We're going to unlink these really fast so I can fine-tune that shrink grab these three move it over okay grab those and slide them over and then we'll trade places with this one and oop see that's what happens when you don't grab them all all right i'm gonna hit the home button really fast make sure i can see all that and bring that over boop 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 ba -doo, ba -doo, boop boom okay cool and now we know if if you hit the up arrow, it's gonna snap you to the beginning of whatever uh, cut you have. So like that, hit the down arrow, bring you to the next cut. Boom, 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 like that. If you hit the uh, the end button, brings you immediately to the end of your sequence. Hit the home button, brings you to the beginning of your sequence. If you hit the backslash arrow above your enter key, or uh, we're talking Windows, so I'm just specifically speaking to Windows people. You can see your entire sequence like that. And uh, now. We are going to make sure. Look at my dad. Boom. Oh, God. Everything sounds good. The audio's down. Green screen looks good. And here we. And. Yeah, Jackie. Cool. Intro's done. And up, down, up. Now you don't want the video sync to be on there. You want to. You want it to be wherever we say we greet the people. Yes, because I already saved. Welcome back to another episode. Boom, right there. Welcome back. Right there, where Rob says welcome back. So we're going to bring it in. Highlight everything. Drag it over. Highlight them again because they unclick for some reason. Boom. Let the fade out hit. And Welcome back to another episode. Boom. Where Episode's ready to go. All right, cool. So now that's almost everything. We now have all the audio done. Everything's good to go. This is a pain in the ass episode because we're fighting some stupid ass boss that I really hate. And now we find where we say goodbye. This is the end of the episode. I have literally never done that. Spoilers. All right, right here. I really died four times? Yeah! That's cr Oh, you know, it's because it also counted. It doesn't fucking matter. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Boom. And then usually if there's anything funny after, I like to let this part play out here. This is after we say goodbye. If there's anything funny, I like to let this part play out. But sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. It all depends. And we'll see. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot. There's not a lot of audio going on in the waves right here. I could always add something funny on like that booty though. Or... But looking like we're going to be a nice little quiet episode today. Nice little calm one. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Next time, guys. Bye bye. Right there. Boom. We'll drag it to the innermost one and then grab these guys. And damn you, and you're linking. Unlink. Okay. And then we'll add a new title. That's right over here. New item. The little folded paper piece. Add a title. Just call it uh, Booty Text. And we'll go... We want it to start like... Uh, we'll say like right there. That booty though. And we'll... Let's just move this really fast. To like right there. And now we want to edit the text. So we're going to go back to this. And we're going to... Highlight it all. We're going to change it to 
black with an outer stroke of white. Bam, I can see it has that white outline. I like it to be a little thicker. We'll bring it up just a skosh to like 22 pixels and then we'll add that shadow to make it float a little. Bring the size up just a skosh. Boom, and then we click on this, click off of it. And now you can see that it looks like the actual retro text that I use. And we kind of bring it right there. Bam, close it. Drag and drop that shit in. Bam, zoom in. Come back here. Bring the tilde key in. And wait for it. Bam, that booty though. Boom, hits. All right, and retro closer. Outro, sorry. Outro, here we go. And boom. And that, in a nutshell, is how you edit a Retro Millennia episode. Um, not too much going on in this one. I didn't really have to keyframe anything in because we didn't. Rob didn't ask me to put anything in, and I didn't uh, want to put anything in too crazy. So, whenever I do have to put an episode, put a keyframe like a banana sliding across the screen, for example, um, it, I leave a note in the Elgato software letting me know that uh, that is it. Got a phone call. I can't believe I have to edit my own video. Whatever. Okay. So, guys, if you want me to um, do any other videos of, like, how to do keyframing where you want to see animation of things moving on the screen, uh, video, uh, the, yeah, video editing, the audio editing, anything like that, just feel free to leave a comment below. If you feel like I didn't uh, explain something enough in depth for you, also, uh, ask, ask away. I will do my best to answer your questions in a most concise manner possible. And until next time, I will uh, see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.